Today is Friday, April 26th. The 2020 race to the White House is already historic. Why hundreds of college students and staff are quarantined. And when you can expect Uber and Lyft drivers to go on strike. Plus, Amazon's new one-day shipping and Avengers Endgame sets a new one-day record. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. And that makes 20, 20 Democratic candidates officially running for president in 2020. CBS News calls it the largest presidential primary field in U.S. history. The latest to join the race, as expected, former Vice President Joe Biden. And with his announcement, he's already dealing with some controversy. First, Biden and Trump are trading criticisms. Biden openly targeted President Trump in his announcement video yesterday, pointing to the white supremacist rally in Virginia back in 2017 and how Trump said there were very fine people on both sides. Biden says when he heard that, he decided to run, saying it's a battle for the soul of our nation. But Trump mocked Biden, tweeting, welcome to the race, sleepy Joe, and warning that this race will be nasty. There's also criticism about Biden's role back in the 90s when Anita Hill accused a Supreme Court nominee of sexually harassing her. At the time, Biden was the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Hill and others say he didn't take her accusation seriously or allow other witnesses to testify. Biden says he regrets how the process went and called to apologize to Anita Hill. But this week, she told The New York Times that she's unsatisfied with his apology until there's real change. Also of note, Biden is not getting former President Barack Obama's endorsement, at least not yet. Biden says he told his former boss not to endorse him so that whoever wins the Democratic nomination to go against Trump wins on their own merits. Stay tuned. Hundreds of people at two public universities are quarantined because they may have been exposed to measles. Close to 300 students and employees at UCLA and Cal State LA in California were sent home and told to stay there possibly for several days or until they can provide proof that they've had the measles vaccine. NBC News reports it's because one student with measles went to class and the library on campus earlier this month. Measles can be spread through the air when the sick person coughs or sneezes And it can actually stay in the air for up to two hours. It's happening during the largest measles outbreak in the U.S. since the illness was eliminated in the year 2000. Health officials say children should be vaccinated and any adults who did not get the vaccine as a child should get one now. Uber and Lyft drivers plan to strike. CBS News reports drivers in at least eight U.S. cities plan to stop taking rides in a couple of weeks, turning off their apps on May 8th. They're protesting their pay, saying they want a minimum wage of $28 an hour, which they say would really be $17 after expenses like gas and tolls. And it's not an accident that this strike is set to happen just as Uber plans to go public. Uber's IPO is scheduled for next month and is expected to value the company at around $80 to $90 billion. Investors and even some employees in the company will be instantly rich, but not the drivers. For now, the strike is set to happen in cities like L.A., Boston, Chicago, and Washington, D.C., While marijuana is no longer just giving people a high, it may also be giving them a job. The New York Times reports the cannabis industry has become one of the country's fastest growing job sectors. And the job site ZipRecruiter says the industry has created at least 300,000 jobs. The new jobs include hourly work at farms and stores and executive positions. And there's strong demand for well-paying positions like chemists, software engineers and nurses. Even though it's still illegal under federal law in the U.S., 33 states have now legalized the sale of medical marijuana, and 10 of those states have given the okay for recreational use. Experts say this is likely just the beginning, and the industry will grow rapidly. All right, much more news ahead, but first, a quick break for today's sponsor. America's beverage companies are working together to support families as they reduce the sugar in their diets. Coke, Dr. Pepper, and Pepsi are providing more great-tasting options with less sugar or no sugar at all, putting clear calorie labels on every product, and working with public health organizations and other national and local partners to build stronger, healthier communities. With more choices, smaller portions, and less sugar, American families can find the balance that's right for them. You can learn more about how these three competitors are working together at balanceus.org. That's balanceus.org. Now back to the news. 
Microsoft hit the $1 trillion mark. It's now the third U.S. company to hit that market value milestone. The Wall Street Journal reports the company's share surged yesterday, hitting a value of $1 trillion, although it came back down and closed at $990 billion. The only other two U.S. companies who have reached a $1 trillion market cap are Apple and Amazon. How does one-day shipping sound? On the same day Amazon reported record profits, Reuters reports the company also announced plans to deliver packages in just one day, at least to its paid Prime members. There's no exact timeline for this yet, but expect one-day shipping, instead of two days, to start rolling out, quote, quickly and through the year. It's one more thing Amazon's competitors, like Walmart and Target, will have to try and keep up with. Walmart is testing out an AI-powered store. It's called the Intelligent Retail Lab, or IRL for short. TechCrunch says it just opened inside a Walmart neighborhood market in Levittown, New York. The store has thousands of cameras hanging from the ceiling. Those cameras will do things like make sure produce stays fresh, spot spills, and check if the shelves are running low on anything. Employees will also get an alert on their phones if something needs to be restocked. And yes, this sounds a bit like Amazon Go stores. Those also use AI and do have cameras in the ceiling, but they're more grab-and-go convenience stores. And the cameras are used to automatically see what you buy, so there's no cashiers. Walmart's new concept includes a large space with about 100 employees, and you still have traditional checkout lines. CVS is opening hundreds of smile shops. It's partnering with Smile Direct Club to do it. That's a startup that makes so-called invisible braces, those removable plastic trays to straighten teeth. CNBC says the smile shops will be inside its drugstore, similar to its minute clinics, and it plans to open a thousand of them over the next two years. There's both praise and some criticism already coming in. Some say this helps bring teeth straightening services to areas that otherwise don't have much access to orthodontic care. But the American Association of Orthodontists say the remote do-it-yourself or mail-in dental services violates some laws and that all treatments should be done in person. Still, CVS says it feels comfortable with this service. Avengers Endgame is officially in theaters in North America. And yes, it's already breaking records. The AP reports the Marvel film is opening on more screens than any movie ever has in U.S. and Canadian theaters, and it's still not enough to keep up with demand. Some AMC theaters, for example, will stay open for 72 hours straight. And pre-sales on ticket sites like Fandango set new records. In China, the movie already had the biggest single day ever in Chinese theaters. Now all eyes are on how this opening weekend ends. Will Avengers Endgame bring in $1 billion worldwide in its first weekend? Stay tuned. And that's it for today. You are ready to go. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks to those of you sharing this episode on social media and with your friends. I so appreciate it. And if you want to read more about any of the stories we talked about, just go to the homepage of thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. You'll find all the story sources and links right there. The Newsworthy is here for you every weekday by four in the morning. I'll be back with more news on Monday. Have a great weekend. Mm-hmm.